Just two years after being reintroduced to the state after nearly a 50-year absence, black-tailed prairie dogs are showing positive signs of re-establishing themselves across part of their historical range in southern Arizona. First-time prairie dog releaser Liz Urban thinks it's a really cool experience. That was great. I've never handled uh, prairie dogs before, so that was an adventure. And it was cool to be able to introduce them to a new place where hopefully they'll do well and reproduce and repopulate. Even facing eventual freedom, these guys were still a handful. Yep, that second one definitely had a little bit of an attitude, but I can't blame them. Uh, over there under the tent, they are uh, marking these individuals before we release them. So they're getting ear tags and then hair dye numbers on the side so that observers can tell them apart once they're introduced. So they're being weighed and just make sure that their health and sex and everything, we have all that information. Monitoring studies indicate that the animals are breeding at both of the previous reintroduction sites with at least 16 pups observed this spring. Now, the Arizona Game and Fish Department and Bureau of Land Management furthered the effort to repopulate the species with the release of 119 prairie dogs at a third site in the Los Cienegas National Conservation Area near Sonoida. As part of the latest release, the University of Arizona placed earmarks and fur dye on all of the animals as part of a study a on survivorship. U of A researcher Sarah Hale explains. Oh, one, no, I'm sorry. Well, well, we're here. mainly going to be monitoring the black tails once they're released, behavior-wise, dispersal, survival, and pretty much everything we can find out from them because they haven't really been studied in the site. Yeah, we're taking weights first. 1.25, and then we're sexing them to see if they're male or female. Male. And then we put ear tags on them so we can keep track of individuals and give them a unique marker. We're just doing numbers right now. So each prairie dog has a different number and we can observe and see which individuals go where and specifically what each one does. <laughs> to get the individual numbers applied, the researchers need to be part biologist, part sleight of hand expert, and part hairdresser. <laughs> this is the hair dye that we're using on the prairie dogs. I think it's Lady Clairol. Something like that. <laughs> Yeah, we well, we could have used those and we could use paintbrushes too. We just didn't have those with us, so <laughs> improvising. <laughs> They're also taking untreated hair samples for another part of the study. Oh yeah, we're taking hair samples in case we want to do DNA analysis to see how they're genetically related and which offspring are related to which adults, hopefully when they have offspring next season. The animals used to re-establish black-tailed prairie dogs in Arizona are chosen based on their similar genetics to the population that previously existed in the state. The prairie dogs are placed into acclimation cages, which are used to prevent the animals from dispersing too quickly upon release and to allow them to adjust to their new environment. In time, the animals will burrow themselves out of the acclimation cages and be free to establish an underground network of tunnels. Black-tailed prairie dogs are one of Arizona's two native prairie dog species. The other species, which is found in northern Arizona, is the Gunnison's prairie dog. Historically, the black-tailed prairie dog was the most widely distributed of the five prairie dog species and were commonly found in southeastern Arizona. Human-related factors, including poisoning and habitat fragmentation, greatly reduced their numbers range-wide over the last 150 years.